Barakim Haberim, welcome to Messianic Moment Ministries. I'm Stephen Brock, and you know who you are on this 10th day of June, 2021. Well, today we're talking about Yeshua, Moses, and Absalom. And, well, it's easy to see the relationship between Yeshua and Moses, right? Moses was sent and empowered by God with supernatural authority in order to free God's chosen people, the Israelites, from slavery to Pharaoh. He was also given instructions by God teaching us how to worship God and how to treat each other the way that God wants us to. And these laws were taught to the people by Moses. Now Yeshua was sent by God, empowered by the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, to free everyone, Jews and eventually Gentiles, from slavery to sin. He taught the spiritual meaning of the laws and commandments that Moses taught so that people's hearts could be changed in order that they would be more receptive to the new covenant God was making through Yeshua, which we read about in Jeremiah 31, 31. So now, what about Absalom? Well, we read about Absalom in 2 Samuel chapters 13 through 19. We see he was kind of prideful and also very deceitful, even setting up to kill his own brother. In 2 Samuel 15, we read how Absalom had conspired to steal the throne from his father, David. He would greet people coming into the city and befriend them, telling them that the king didn't appoint anyone to hear their case, but if they followed him, Absalom would give them justice. He would be friendly, kiss them, stealing their hearts and making himself popular among the people while intimating that King David didn't really care for them as much. When he had won enough of the popular vote, so to speak, he defied his father and proclaimed himself king. Eventually, he found himself hung on a tree by his hair, and when discovered there, he was killed by the king's general, and David regained his throne at the loss of his son. So, no, what does Absalom have in common with Yeshua, other than being the son of the king? Actually, <laughs> nothing. But Christianity has created a son of the king, their savior, who defies his father by telling people they should follow him and reject his father's rule, which we call the Torah, so that they can be given justice. In other words, find salvation. Wow, <laughs> that's a hard word to hear. And at first, it sounds so wrong, doesn't it? I mean, Yeshua the Messiah is a rebellious son who's acting, well, like Lucifer, trying to wrest the kingdom from God? <laughs> Come on, do this with sugar. <laughs> Truth be told, I am not crazy. Think about it. By using, or, or should I really say misusing, the letters from Shaul, Paul, that were addressed to the Gentile believers who were first learning about God, Yeshua, and the Torah, well, Christianity has separated itself from Judaism and the ways God taught us to live and worship him. Christianity, over the millennia, has taught that, well, the Jewish people are no longer God's chosen by misusing Galatians 6.16, which provides the foundation for replacement theology. They've taught that the kosher laws were done away with by misusing Mark 7.19 and Acts 10. It's taught that obedience to the Torah has been replaced by grace, misusing Romans 6.14. And that Yeshua is God himself, misusing what we read in the Gospel of John. Every single one of these theological beliefs screams rebellion against the Father. When Yeshua said that he would be raised up like the snake in the desert, that's John 3.14. He wasn't talking only about being crucified. He was also saying that he would be idolized and worshipped instead of God. That is exactly what happened to the metal snake Moses made. At first, it was a symbol of God's salvation at that point from dying from snake bite, but later was turned by people into a God 
replacing the true God and being worshipped. And you read about this, first in Numbers 21.8, about the snake being made, and later in 2 Kings 18.4, how they worshipped it. Yeshua is the Messiah God sent, and he is, by divine conception, God's son. Everything he did and said was meant to glorify God, his father. And he was so humble that he even refused to be called good, saying that the only one who is good is his father in heaven. You can read that in Mark 10, 18. Yeshua taught the spiritual meaning of the laws and commandments that God gave to Moses. Moses, as the Pharisee had been doing, taught only the literal meaning, which we call the Peshat. So, for example, do not murder means just that. Don't kill anyone. But Yeshua taught us the spiritual meaning, which we call the Ramez. So, do not murder became more than just don't kill anyone. It became do not even hate people in your heart. Yeshua did nothing against God and everything for God, even to tell people that he only does and says what God tells him to do and say, which is why when we see him, we see God. <laughs> that wasn't meant to say Yeshua is God, which is what Christianity's Trinity theory, theology proclaims, but simply that because Yeshua is doing only what God tells him to do, and saying only what God tells him to say, in him we see an exact image of God. But he's not God himself. So whereas Yeshua is the prophet which Moses said God would send, that's Deuteronomy 18.5, Christianity has replaced Yeshua's role as Messiah with that of Absalom, a son who rebels against his father and tries to take the kingship away from him by endearing himself to the people, which has been accomplished through the teaching of Christianity that no one who follows Jesus Christ has to obey any of those Jewish holidays or laws. God gave Moses those laws to teach to the Israelites for them to teach to the world. God said that the Jewish people are to be his nation of priests to the world. That's Exodus 19.6, meaning to teach the world, Jews and Gentiles, how to worship God and how to treat each other. Yeshua is the epitome of that commission, and he never did, said, or taught anyone ever to disobey the Torah or to worship him. So, <laughs> if you are a follower, of any of the Christian teachings I just talked about, please, please reconsider what you are doing. Reread the Gospels. Forget about the epistles for a moment and find out what Yeshua said. After all, he is the one God sent as the Messiah. Not Paul, not James, not John or Mark or Luke, not Matthew and not Peter. Yeshua is the Messiah. Yeshua is the one who we should listen to and obey. And Yeshua never taught anything but to follow God's instructions in the Torah. Not as the means of salvation, because faith is how we are saved, but as the means to please God and remain free of sin. Look, this is how salvation works. We are saved by faith in God and Yeshua as his Messiah. All right, I'm going to say that again so nobody misunderstands. This is how salvation works. We are saved by faith in God and Yeshua is his Messiah. The Torah has God's instructions on how we should live. Yeshua is the means for us to be forgiven of the sins we accidentally commit when we violate the laws in the Torah and of which we repent. And grace is God's forgiveness, which he is willing to give when we have accepted Yeshua as our Messiah. The Torah was never done away with, and God promised that we would be blessed when we obey the Torah. That's Deuteronomy 28. And the Torah is exclusively what Yeshua taught us to do. God is still the king of the universe. And even when Yeshua is king of the world, he will still report to his father, whom he loves and obeys. Yeshua is the prophet Moses talked of. 
He is not the Absalom which Christianity has turned him into. Well, if you're still here, thank you for being here. Please like my Messianic Woman Facebook page, subscribe here, and go back to the website and hit the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button in the right-hand margin, and share these messages with everyone you know. Help this ministry grow. And remember that I always welcome your comments. Hey, you don't even have to agree with me, just so long as you're respectful. Well, gave you a lot to think about. So until next time, Yitrot Baruch Hashem. Thank you.